supplement. You mentioned some of the differences in frequency and uh, even within like the, the female menstrual cycle. It seems like there's some differences in recovery for females compared to men as well. Yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about women and sex differences. That, that's what I'm doing <laughs> my thesis on. So that's like, that's the literature I've, I've been in the most recently. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and it, even there seems to be some differences between um, like dynamic versus isometric exercises, I believe, as well, right? Yeah, man, it's crazy. Um, yeah. So in terms of recovery, so I mentioned, I mentioned those three papers that found that um, the return on investment for training might be a little bit higher in the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle than the luteal phase. Um, and that may be driven by differences in, in recovery rate. Um, so there is, so this is kind of crazy. There's only one paper um, looking to see if menstrual cycle phase affects recovery rate in women. Um, mm -hmm. Like you would think there would be a lot. And there, there are more um, looking at various aspects of recovery after like repeated sprint training or endurance training. But in terms of like strength training, uh, I've searched uh, far and wide, and I've only been able to find one paper. Um, Markovsky, 2014, mm -hmm. um, had women do some like pretty hardcore eccentric bicep curls, um, either during the follicular or luteal phase of their menstrual cycle. Um, and there were some pretty clear, pretty large differences in performance recovery with women um, recovering, I believe, isometric elbow flexion force uh, a lot faster during their follicular phase. Um, and so part of that might have to do with the way that um, that the sex hormones vary throughout the menstrual menstrual cycle. Um, so here's here's the short version. So during like at the very start of the follicular phase, like first day of menses, um, estrogen's low, progesterone's low. Uh, like hormonally, women look very similar to men with no testosterone during like the first day of menses. Then um, over the course of the follicular phase, estrogen levels start increasing while progesterone levels stay quite low. Estrogen peaks around the time of ovulation and then stays higher during the follicular or during the luteal phase than it was in the follicular phase, but starts tapering off until menses begins again. Uh, progesterone is low all during the follicular phase during the first two weeks of the cycle, um, starts increasing after um, ovulation takes place, and then is quite high throughout the entirety of the luteal phase, and then drops off around the time of the menses beginning. Um, so not only do you have to keep in mind the hormone levels, you also have to keep in mind sensitivity to those hormones. So one of the things estrogen does is it increases um, density of progesterone receptors and also sensitivity of those of those receptors to progesterone, and progesterone does the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. It decreases um, uh, density of estrogen receptors and decreases the actions of estrogen within the body. And this is, to some degree, a gross generalization, but it gets the job done. Basically, estrogen is good and progesterone is bad when it comes to um, any of the things we would care about, uh, mm -hmm. like recovery from training, susceptibility to muscle damage. So until progesterone starts ramping up in the luteal phase, um, you're really just dealing with the actions of estrogen, which a lot of people think like, a lot of people think that like, oh, testosterone's the male hormone, estrogen's the female hormone, men are big and strong, women aren't as big and strong, right. therefore testosterone must be good and estrogen must be bad. That couldn't be further from the truth. Like estrogen is an unmitigated positive for all aspects of athletic performance and muscle growth and muscle recovery for women. Mm -hmm. um, and so during the follicular phase, when estrogen levels are ramping up and progesterone is still really low, that's great. It helps women uh, be a little bit less susceptible to muscle damage, uh, increases muscle protein synthesis, increases satellite cell activation and proliferation. A lot of good stuff happening. D then during the um, luteal phase, estrogen levels are still elevated above where they were at the start of the follicular phase. But because progesterone starts ramping up, um, that largely counters the effects of estrogen. And so then you have increased susceptibility to muscle damage, 
um, increased rates of fatigue, slower muscle recovery after training. Um, so yeah, th those things uh, do seem to vary considerably throughout the menstrual cycle. And then uh, you also have to consider the effects of contraceptives. So um, largely this isn't as big of an issue anymore as it was back in the day. Mm -hmm. So um, most contraceptives uh, use both estrogen and, well, some sort of estrogen and some sort of progest, pro, can't, can't talk, progestin. Um, and some of them, so the mini pill only uses a progestin. Um, but the, the degree to which uh, hormonal contraceptives are going to be deleterious for female athletes uh, largely depends on the androgenicity of the progestin that they use. Um, and the earlier, um, the earlier hormonal contraceptives used progestins that were, that had much higher androgenicity uh, than the current ones do. Um, and basically the, the, the higher the androgenicity of a progestin, the more that it counters the effects of estrogen in the body. Um, if you just want to simplify all of that. And so the like fourth and fifth generation hormonal contraceptives use much less uh, androgenic progestins. So uh, largely, thankfully, like current hormonal contraceptives don't seem to negatively impact female athletes as much as prior ones did, like the formulations back in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Um, but one thing, and so don't take this as medical advice by any means, uh, but the one hormonal contraceptive that might be worth uh, female athletes looking out for and potentially talking to their doctor about is... Um, the like monthly progesterone injections. Uh, the brand name for that, I, I believe, is Depo Provera. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been linked to increased weight gain, um, increased feelings of lethargy, and I don't think it's ever actually been directly studied, like its effects on athletic performance. Um, but there was a survey um, in elite female athletes that came out, I believe, last year, um, basically asking them like what hormonal contraceptives do you use and have you noticed negative impacts of your contraceptives on your your performance and recovery from training um, and the 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 highest rate of negative reports from female athletes uh, was for depot provera for the progesterone injections mm -hmm. um, so yeah for the most part like modern contraceptives seem to be okay um, but but the progesterone injections might be worth looking out for